Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My wife always likes me to start out with the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. Me ka'i noa, ke makua, ke keke, a me ke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, let us do all things in the name of uh, in the name of the Father and in the and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Um, and may God bless this this broadcast we have with us today. Uh, a, a, a returning friend, B.J. McKay, is in the house, um, leadership consultant and uh, fitness. Uh, I guess fitness, everything. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Those who are led by the Spirit are like the wind. That's something Jesus said. Those who are led by the Spirit, of course, that's capital S, that means Holy Spirit, are like the wind. You don't know where they're going. You don't know where they're coming from. You know, I, as I, my wife and I have a sailboat. We sail in the Virgin Islands. And uh, there's something interesting about a sailboat. And I think it has to do with human nature itself. I was talking with my son Joshua about this actually this morning. Uh, he and I both got our pilot licenses together. And sailing is a lot like flying. There's so many elements to it that are, that are basically scientifically the same. A sloop, the type of sailboat uh, that is a sloop that has the two, the, the, the front sail and then the main sail. It can actually fly angling into the wind. It can actually sail angling into the wind. Uh, you know, in the old days, the, uh, the, uh, the big square riggers, those were mostly going to be downwind type runs. Uh, but the sloop, uh, it can sail into the wind. So it may not go, it can't go directly into the wind, but it can go into the wind. Um, because as you, go in, as you go into the wind, same thing with an airplane, the wind blows over the sail and it goes faster over the top of the sail than under the sail. So it actually gives the sail lift or it gives the airplane wing lift. And so a sailboat is being pulled through the water. Uh, it's going against the wind, being pulled through the water. And that's interesting, isn't it, as Christians? Because I think Christians are meant to go against the current, meant, meant, to, go, meant to face resistance in our lives, and meant to be drawn, uh, drawn by the wind and being led by the Holy Spirit. So think about that today in your prayer time. Are you uh, just going with the flow? Are you, are you, doing on a, are you just on a downwind run? Or are you uh, going in? Are you going against the wind? Are you going not, you know, it's so interesting. You're going against the wind, but the wind is actually helping you, pulling you forward. So turn your face into the wind and, and, and let the Lord uh, lead you. As you face resistance, uh, don't be surprised if you feel the power of the Holy Spirit fill your, fill your sails and, and pull you. We have a beautiful guest with us today. Uh, I don't usually have guests return, but this is a man I'd like to have back on our show quite regularly. His name is BJ McKay. Hey, BJ, welcome to the show. Oh, it's great to be back there, did here there, with you in spirit in Hawaii. Did there used to be a TV show called BJ and the Bear? Maybe we should bring it back, you and me. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> I, just need a, I just need a pet monkey to keep to be with me in my Jeep. So. Well, was was the bear was the bear a monkey? Is that what it was in that show? Yeah, it was uh, BJ McKay was the dry, truck driver, and uh, Bear, his best friend Bear. Was, was, monkey. Uh, was the monkey. So I guess so I'm, the we, monkey. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm the monkey. I'm the monkey. I'm the monkey in this scenario. That's pretty funny. Yeah, right. Well, B BJ is a, is a leadership consultant uh, and also owns a gym. And uh, and part of being a gym owner is just that to inspire people to physical fitness. And uh, and so, G so BJ, you know, we, we, we welcome you to the show because in the man cave, when men join the man cave, uh, the very first thing they start doing is get into physical condition. Mm -hmm. I want to talk just a moment about that as a segue into our deeper conversation about uh, seeking God's will and direction in our lives uh, and overcoming uh, the winds, such as sins of uh, sins and things like that in our lives. So, so uh, what, why, why is physical fitness, uh, how, how does physical fitness help us train in the virtues? Yeah, so I, a couple ways to frame it, you can attack this from many angles. In my experience, it's what's prayer without asceticism. So I think it, 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 what is prayer without I, asceticism? That's the word you use, yeah. right? 
yeah, first define define what asceticism is for for those on a lower poor yeah. pay grade. Yeah. So if 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 I'm in prayer, like what am I what am I sacrificing? What am I giving up in terms of comforts? Not just not sinning, but where am I trying to harden myself in a way that I can make myself a more worthy recipient, a more worthy prayer that I'm offering something more. In a moment when you're praying, there is a bit of asceticism because could you be spending your time doing something else there? Sure. So there's a, there's a little bit there. But when it comes to, you started this with physical fitness, when it comes to like my preparedness to enter the world, to be a vehicle for the spirit, to be the boat that you talked about earlier, you know, am I prepared? Did, did I do the things necessary, to whether I'm flying a plane, like you talked about you and Josh having your pilot's license, whether I'm sending a boat out into, into the waters? Um, am I stocked? Am I ready to go? Oftentimes, people see prayer as this like, oh, it's just a soft retreat. You're just, oh, it's great that you're meditating and you're, you're thinking and everything It's disgusting, else. And, is it? Oh, you're centering yourself. You're coming to a place. You know, it's more than that. Yeah. I, I mean, even talk to my son, um, who's a, a junior in high school, is like, you know, when I'm praying, like, I know what you think it looks like. And I'm not preparing for battle. I'm in battle. And I think sometimes men can get that confused when they see prayer as more of a soft, effeminate aspect of faith that kind of ward them off versus you talk about like fitness. Fitness isn't just body. It's not just nutrition. It's not just all that stuff. Like spiritual fitness is built on top of that. And if you don't have enough respect for self to build this vehicle up, that's going to carry itself all kinds of different places. It's not just going to, oh, my spiritual life is completely fit and in shape, even though I am not on multiple levels. I, I would I would counter someone who would claim that. You know, there's a there's a, a saying I heard recently on a on a Western, and it says this: "How you do anything is how you do everything." I don't know where that mm. quote came from, but I heard it on a Western. How you do anything is how you do everything. I know when I trained in martial arts, Master Stephen Hayes, you know, the first the first white ninja, I was able to. I trained in ninjutsu. Um, he uh, talked about how you get out of a chair your penmanship, all of these things. It's not perfectionism. It's a certain amount of, uh, of, 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 of clarity of excellence. That's different than perfectionism. Um, so how you do anything, if you, if, you are, if you are lazy in one area of your life, if you're not diligent in your work, it, it carries over into the diligence in your prayer life as well. So how you do anything really is how you do everything. And so... Uh, we're not a, a, a soul encased in a body. We're a, we're body and soul. We're we're, we're not just the, the body isn't just a donkey carrying around our more important spiritual soul. Jesus loves our body so much that he became um, man. You know, flesh and blood. You know, soul. Uh, uh, and so the so how you do anything is how you do everything. So fitness is a way to really grow. I think you know we learned you know, those old martial arts movies. You know. Uh, you can learn spiritual training from the outside in. In fact, they have to go together. That's why Catholics, we go to Mass, it's like doing calisthenics, right? You sit down, you kneel down, you stand up, right? 100%. When I think it's just, when you think about fitness and you listen to someone like yourself, Bear, who's accomplished so much, and you see somebody who's already fit, um, a lot of people start, uh, especially men that are, are, are not fit physically anymore, think everything has to happen in these broad strokes that mm. I have to just get there and I have to go all in all of a sudden. Like fitness starts in minutes of increments over days and time. It's about consistency. And that's where it's like I look down my nose at motivation and I look at process, instilling discipline, right. relying on that because motivation is going to come and go. I'm sure there's days you wake up and being bare walls and doing things you want to do that day. Oh, God, it's, God, it's, it's kind of a little bit of an effort. But do you do it or do you not do it? That's the Odds question. are good, but Barry, based on your experience and what I've seen you do in your history, you do it anyway. And I think that's the kind of thing that fitness can teach you over time. And in short order, what happens? Five minutes turns to 10, 10 turns to 20, and then all of a sudden you start to see the results happen. And what happens? The flywheel starts spinning and it gets easier and easier. And you know what? It's also the minute you do that, it's not okay. There's a process of your body becoming more fit. And uh, the word virtue, the Catholic Church teaches that virtue is a habit. And so how do you establish a habit? Is that 30 day, then that magic 100 day? But the minute you step out for that, that swim or that walk or, or to lift weights, 
uh, the minute you do that, you're already living in virtue. Your body may not show it yet, but the minute you do that, virtue is filling your soul. Your soul is feeling right because you're because it's you're, you know the man is a is a is is um, a trinity in a sense: spirit, soul, and body. You know, the, the, we have a spiritual soul, but in the deepest part of our soul is that is that temple of the Holy Spirit. You know, our whole course, our bodies are called the temple too. But but when you have a when you're a person whose body controls your soul, that's not good. Your body should be saying yes to your soul, and your soul should be saying yes to God. There's a certain ascendancy there, and when your body says, "Yeah, I'll feel like it," my my wife's good friend, uh, uh, who she goes hiking with all the time and surfs with, she goes, "Sometimes you just gotta whip your body, just tell you, just whip your body into gear and say, let 'Let's go.' Yeah, I know you may not want to, but let's go." But the beautiful thing is, you may your body may not show the results right in a way, but right off, from the very moment you say yes and you step out and do that. That first, I remember when I pedaled my bicycle across the United States, the first uh, mile or two was the hardest. It was almost impossible. And then all of a sudden it just became uh, easier. So the minute you pursue physical fitness, you're all, then, then you're in virtue. You don't have to wait till you lose the weight or get more stamina. We're talking with B.J. McKay. He's a leadership consultant and a fitness consultant. And I always like to start from the outside in. When we get back, we're going to get more, more gritty and talk about our spiritual journey and, our, and uh, the direction God has for us. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Oh, I'm so happy to tell you the book 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is being published right now. I mean, this is a delayed this is a delayed broadcast, but I'm twitching. I'm so excited because I'm recording this earlier than it's being released, and, and my book is coming out in just a few days, so I'm so stoked. And uh, love to have you. I feel like this is a book that really needs, needs to find its audience. I think there's people out there that may, may want to go to Amazon and buy 10, 20 of these books and give it to their friends. Women, buy it, read it, have your daughters read it, especially if they're coming of age so they know what a real man is. And uh, if you're a single mom, read it to your sons. Dads, read this with your sons. Um, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Uh, we talk about how a man has to have a creed, and then he has to have a set of rules, a code that he lives by. And I just go through, through, uh, through 12 of those. But uh, it's a gritty... 
It's very real. It's like a father speaking to a son or brothers talking to brothers. It's not your what was that out that that commercial? It's not your dad's Oldsmobile. This isn't just your your mom's retreat type thing. This is just real gritty, very real, full of grit and grace. Um, Twelve rules for manly for manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? You get it on Amazon, our website, Sophia. Barnes & Noble bookstores, any, anywhere books are sold. We have as our guest today, B.J. McKay, who is, uh, uh, I'm so thrilled to have you on my show, B.J. He's a, he's a leadership consultant, and he's also a, a fitness consultant and owns a, and, and owns a fitness gym. Hey, B.J., what, what, do you, what is a, taking personal leadership in our life? I would like to talk about, about that. Then, you know what I want to do? I want to just say, B.J., what's on your heart? Mm. Tell us what's on your heart, but tell us what you mean. What, what is leadership? And then personal leadership in our, even in our own lives yeah and, and for those listening pers- I, personal leadership this isn't just uh, my interpretation interpretation but uh even harvard business review will reference this and uh, they've looked at this over time what is leadership and uh one of the key things that they connect the leadership to is self-awareness mm. one of the best leaders demonstrate self-awareness um who are the kindest who's the most self-aware man who ever lived jesus christ read it like it's a different lens to see that in your own life and whenever i i, I uh, another line i use on that and what's always on my heart and what's been on my heart recently bear is um whenever i'm upset angry and i have visceral responses to emotional responses to things where are the two words that um, revolve around that self-awareness problem one is deserve and mm. the other one's resentment mm. where is my where do i feel like i deserve something that i'm quote unquote not getting and that's where you plant all the seeds of resentment. How dare you keep that from me, oh, bear? How dare my boss do blank? Or how dare my friend not blank? Or how dare my kid? Or how mm. dare this person cut in front of me? Like whenever we get those visceral emotions, it kind of is a moment where I'm trying to rewire myself to remember it's a self-awareness gift. Ooh, that something of the world is triggering. You talked about it earlier, that body driving the spirit, not the other way around. What do I do with that? What do I do with that? And I heard another quote that I, I think you might like. Um, and again, much like yourself, I can't, uh, I don't know where to attribute it, but it's um, very few men can conquer the whole world, but any man can renounce it. So in that moment, where can I renounce my attachments to the way things should be for me, the way that I want to get them, the things that make me more comfortable and live that life of the spirit and deny it? Like, even though I don't have it, whether I'm on my motorcycle driving by a cool property, and I'm like, wow, that looks great. Can I enjoy it without like lusting for it? Like that I have to have it. That's great. Onward I go. See a great car. Wasn't that cool to see? Look, I saw a Lamborghini today. That's so cool. You want one of those? No, because then I'd have to take care of it. And I'd care about it. It would bother me. So I think those are the, the your, your first question about um, what is leadership? What is personal leadership? I think the best answer is where it starts. Are you or are you not self-aware if you're listening to this? And then the next question would be, how do you know? And the, some of the examples I gave is one of those moments where if you don't take an assessment, a personality assessment of some sort that can drive toward it, um, all the annoyances in your life can be their own little assessment. Ah, very well. Well, you know, that it's the Catholic way. Of course, I forget. Was it Socrates or Plato? I believe it was those Socrates. Are both good to quote. But, no but, one will challenge. Yeah, we'll just say, well, Plato was quoting Socrates. Socrates didn't write anything down, but I believe it was Socrates, of course, says that an a, a, a unexamined life is not worthwhile or, or, is, or, or is not a, well, a, a life well lived. But uh, in the Catholic Church, we have this tradition, too, of, of at the end of the day examining uh, the things that we can be thankful for, for the Lord, uh, the virtues that we were able to um, live. And then the areas that we failed in. So uh, t- tell us about that sort of reflection, that self-reflection. Yeah, I mean, the Catholic Church, the the gift that she abounds in is one of the, some of the gifts that make her most unpopular in the culture, that wind we're driving against, which is there is all kinds of opportunity for detachment from the culture in the world. Mm. When you look at the sacraments, you look at... Um, if I walk into a Catholic church and I'm not Catholic, I can't just go up and receive the Eucharist. I must first understand and have a deep knowledge of what I'm committing to and being in communion with before I accept communion. Confession, heaven forbid, I get in front of a man and just have to tell, like, God will tell my, I'll tell my sins to God. I'm like, you know, that's what we're doing. Right? You know, that's what's, what's going on. It's like, but I'm making it formal because I am of this community. I have mm-hmm. damaged this community. I am of this. I matter. 
Every sin, you think, have, every sin um, <clears throat> is a sin against you. I mean, if it's a sin against others or a sin against God. It's a sin against you, but it's a sin against it's a sin against the society and the body of Christ. And so it's it's appropriate uh, to 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 confess sins, you know, to to uh, the community or to the priest representing the community. But he's also in persona Christi is also representing Jesus. I cut you off. Go ahead, BJ. Well, no, I just and I think that you you, you started with the reflection on um, you know your evening exam. When you're writing things down, I mean, any men listening to this, are you doing that? Like that is a that is an exercise. We talked about fitness earlier in self awareness. Did I live a day that was purposeful? Did I start my day and did I set any course at all? Did you set any course at all? Okay, so let's talk about that for a second, BJ. This mm-hmm. is why I got to have you on all the time because I think you kind of bring out the best of me too. <clears throat> you know, in, in, in when you sail. Uh, in the mornings, you, you, you check it out the night before. You, you, now we're so lucky we can check the wind patterns. Uh, but the wind changes. You know, you mm. can r- have these very sophisticated wind models. But I really want to go to that island. Well, not today. You know, because that's not the course the Holy Spirit's leading you on today. You know, so so setting, setting having your time the night before to, to uh, you know, kind of get your compass bearings. But then but then having that, that daily prayer time, I was saying, what is the course God is guiding me on today? You know, to, to be truly led by the Holy Spirit, have a, the Holy Spirit action plan. And you have to go where the wind's taking you. I mean, you can you can set your course according to the wind. You don't have to go exactly where the wind is pushing. But there's something about that, that word setting our course. How does a man find his course in life? How does a man find his course, his kind of daily course? Hmm. Well, I mean... It- if, if they don't know the answer to that question, they should go through your school of manliness to set their creed and start asking themselves the hard questions. Because the fact of the matter is, if you're seeking around for someone to tell you what it is, you're going to be getting a lot of opinions. Mm. And I think a man has to stand up and say, this is what I stand for and I will live for it and die for it. Mm. And that's why you meet like the, the, the most miraculous people to me are people of faith. Like they're these Catholic saints when they say like they knew. The day mm-hmm. pre-prescribed itself. Once mm. they had that level of detachment, they had a singular focus of who they're going to serve. And the moments, the wind, the weather around them was almost irrelevant. Mm. Why? Because I will be this man regardless of anything. Wind, storm, mm. snow, whether I mm. die today, whether I don't. They had it all wired into their life. And the modern man is um, is so unfortunate in that regard that we're split in a tight hundreds of directions in a day. Mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. ones are serving your purpose in life that you're going to look back and look at your kids here kids here's my book for my life and what i have accomplished and here's like a given wednesday in 2023 that i lived my life well, was it in there or not even mm. fractionally was there any advancement for you to become that man in that day or was that a day you should be sitting in the confessional the next day saying hey bless me father for i've sinned i've missed my aim has been off yeah i love that the aim too and we, well, i want to talk more about about that term, that archery term of aiming in a moment here. But I was thinking that, you know, also as an athlete, <clears throat> you know, it's interesting. I, you, can get in, you can get in such great shape and six weeks go by of being lazy and you, you, you know, you've lost your conditioning already. Your, 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 your strength is diminished. Your cardio is diminished. You're, you're, you're becoming sluggish. So it is a daily relationships. It's this, the, I will serve, you know, that getting up in the morning and say, yeah, I will serve. What is your will, Lord? And not, I'm not just talking about physical fitness. I'm talking about spiritual fitness. The other thing is, you know, as a surfer, the first thing you do as a surfer is like first thing in the morning, I look out at the ocean. I'm detaching from the land the minute I get up. And then at some point during the day, I'm going to paddle out or I'm going to swim out. And I turn my back on the Aina and I swim out into the ocean. That's mm. the first That's the first spiritual lesson is detachment. To turn your, as a Benedictine oblate, you know, to live in the world but not be of the world. And that's a very Catholic way of looking at life is to, is to enjoy the beauty of life, enjoy the beauty of a, like you said, of a Ferrari, a beautiful car, uh, but not to be, a, not feel like I have to have it for mine. It's... It's a releasing from earthly goods. You know, the, everything God made is good, but if you if you overemphasize it, it becomes not good because God is the true eternal good. I'm getting too theoretical here. We're talking with our, our friend B.J. McKay, a, a leadership consultant and uh, 
I don't know how, what the word is exactly because you're a fitness coach, but you're also in the fitness industry. You know, as fitness your own, entrepreneur. Own, um, fitness entrepreneur, BJ yeah. McKay. We'll be That'll right back. Work. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Justice. Standing before a judge on the wrong side of the law, that would be me back in 1968. Reckon I was 17 years old when I stood before Pacific County Superior Court Judge Herbert E. Wheeland, this time for stealing beer and underage drinking. Was my second time before the judge. Yep, I was in a fix of trouble but wasn't smart enough to be scared. That is, until after being sentenced to probation, the judge with stern face and a solemn words leaned over the bench and intoned, Mr. Markham, if I see you in my court again, you will be going to the reformatory. Truth be known, I wasn't malicious, just stupid 17. Fortunately for me, at that time, certain offenses for juveniles were expunged from the public record if no further offenses were committed. Judge Whelan's stern warning had its intended effect. His form of justice, mixed with a bit of mercy, saved me from taking a serious bad turn in the fork of the road of life. Fast forward 17 years. I was a Pacific County Commissioner approving the budget for Judge Whelan in his Superior Court. I sent the old judge a thank you note for giving me that one more chance back in 1968. Now the ultimate judge himself is God Almighty, and that'd be Jesus' daddy. Folks today don't like to think of God as judge. Fact is, true justice has fallen into disrepute. Yet the good book spells it out plain like. It tells us we all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Woo-wee! That should pause you and me to do some serious contemplating. This is Daniel Laboon Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everybody to go to EWTN and check check out the, the channel viewing for our new, our new uh, season of Long Ride Home. 11 new episodes, all filmed in Hawaii. So we have four seasons uh, of the Long Ride Home Motorcycle TV series. But if you want to, you can go to uh, Mama Bears. You can go to deepadventure.com, become the member of the Mama Bears, or, you, or men can join the Man Cave. And then you get access to the secret YouTube links uh, so you can watch it anytime you want to on your on your TV and share it with your friends. Or actually, you can go to Prime Video and watch it there too. So Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. My sons Shane and Josh are the ones behind all of that that did all the hard work. Uh, and uh, and uh, we've delivered that we've delivered that to you. So uh, go to deepadventure.com, become part of our our subscription to our newsletter there, and you will get these uh, the 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 radio show emailed to you every Saturday morning, the YouTube version of it, so you can see how handsome B.J. McKay is, our guest today. B.J., welcome to the show. Thank you, Bear. You know, one of the things about detachment is, you know, you can want you can want a good thing too much. 
you know you can uh you know it's 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 on it's it's over being overly attached to a good thing is that can you can you expand on that for me a little bit yeah i mean i can you know being overly it's it, it's the beauty of lent if you're catholic like us it's like where why are you giving that up there's nothing wrong with it it's not a sin it's you're selecting oh i gave up chocolate i gave up like alcohol like the reason we give up something that does bring us some temporal comfort and joy that's the whole purpose of it it's kind of a little bit of like sanctifying suffering i'm selecting it i'm opting in and then in a broader sense like as a leadership consultant and a catholic man in the a world that's ever more um like like post-christian in a lot of ways in the workforces i'm in um the 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 thing that we that we lose sometimes when we're um thinking about like detachment is like a lot of the things that are applauded in the workforce and when you go to work to do your job are things that are can be unbridled and you're only going to want more. I coach a lot of salespeople and influencers and negotiators. They all that a, a theme that I find with some of the best, including myself, is um, ambition. I'm incredibly ambitious. Look through the annals of history of people that were um, am, uh, had unbridled ambition. Although you're not going to like how it ends. The root word for the word ambition, ambition was was not a good word back in the days of Rome, the early days. The word ambition actually in its root word means to take a, to twist around a corner, to go around someone's back. So it's kind of a selfishness. Is, is, is it's it's a, I want more for me as opposed to I want to I want to be a servant leader, and and you know uh, I- enhance everyone around me. It's more like I want this for myself. Is am I getting close to what you're saying? Yes, and it's it, it, when if, when is a sales team, a leader of a sales team, say, "Hey, great news! Next quarter, we're going to drop. We're going to try to we're going to try to decrease production by twenty percent. You all take a break and relax, and let's just reassess." Never. I mean, the it's just when it comes to detachment, it's being careful. I I heard another line somewhere where it says, "If you don't," uh, I, I think this was from um, um, the the book Essentialism uh, by uh, M- McEwen. Is his mm. name first name escapes me that said if you don't set priorities for yourself other people will set them for you mm. and the people that are the most bridled with that that i coach in my, in my leadership consultancy is are people like oh, I'm, I'm so busy i just don't have any time I, i'd love to but i gotta be here and i gotta be there and i look at their calendars and they're just all overlapped and i'm like right. what's it like i've said this more than once and when i started coaching engagement where i'm always the first step is measuring awareness i can't coach where there's not awareness is What's it like to look at that calendar and know today is going to be a lie? Going to be a lie? A lie. Because you have three events all simultaneously happening that says you've accepted. So every day you start not only behind, you start with impossible. How does it leave you feeling at the end of the day? You're busy all day. You were everywhere all day. But was it a meaningful day? Did you make meaningful commitments that you had the inventory to follow through on? And other people on the other end of the spectrum have yes to these. They give out more yeses than they have the inventory to follow through on in any given day and period because they want to avoid that minor friction of, hey, Bear, I don't have time for that right now. But if I could do that um, by the end of the day on Friday, would that still be okay? They right. will a- avoid that little friction and they'll say, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll jump on that. Bro. I'll try to take care of it. And what are they? They're at home an hour later. They're missing their supper with their They're friends. missing they're their – yeah, they're, they're – you know, it's like – okay, let, let me talk about that a little bit too and join join you join with you. You know, as a CPA, I I, I often have people come in and they have these, I would call them ambitious, you know, Um, bigger, better, got to build my business, got to get a new outlet, got to, you know, build a new office. I want to be on this island and that island. And I ask them a question, when is, what is your end game in this? You know, is your goal to build a big big practice and a business and sell it? Or is it, what is, what is, and when is enough enough? And then I have to have really heartfelt conversations with them because some of them I can see can handle it and they can do it in a balanced way and it's healthy for them. But for some of them, I can say that you're going to this business, you'll probably be successful at it, but you're going to lose your family and your wife. You know, what, where's that balance? When is How do they respond? I can tell you the litany of, of, of people that have uh, where I've seen them go, their businesses grow, grow, grow until they tell they until they just explode and they're gone and their relationships are gone. But I can tell you many people, I've had people come up to me that used to be my clients in California, bump into them in, in Hawaii more than once. They go, I want to thank you so much because you helped me build a, a, a quality business, find the sweet spot where the profit is, 
provide good employment for my people and have a balanced life and a full full life with my family and it's cool because I'll see their family with them on the you know on the beach here so so that's part of it is when is enough enough and that's part of the going back to that that lesson lesson on detachment the other thing is I I just know people uh, there's so many meetings people want you to participate in and I just I had just had a rule I don't go to meetings I'll go to doings but I won't go to a meeting don't put don't put me on that list you know is it is it gonna be a doing or are we just gonna sit there and talk and talk so so this this whole theme that you have today that we're talking about of detachment such a Catholic Catholic theme Let's talk about this. One of the biggest attachments, uh, especially let's talk about men, is uh, setting the course, missing the mark uh, in this area of sin. Uh, uh, and, and sin can come in so many ways. Um, but the word for sin in the um, Greek New Testament and in the Hebrew is to mi- it's an archery term to miss the mark. And it has to do with where your focus is. What are you aiming where, what you know is your focus first thing in the morning to to read the pray the liturgy of the hour or to go to mass um, where is your focus because where you where you you know when I'm when I'm teaching someone how to surf and I want them to learn how to turn the surfboard and I'll, it happens to me a lot when I'm surfing in certain areas here in Waikiki a lot of beginners and someone sees me and they're gonna hit me uh, they're, they're surfing and I'm trying to paddle to get away from them down the line and they're looking at me and they're scared and they're going to hit me and I just say, look to your right, look to your right. And when they look to their right, their board turns. Hmm. And so where you look, where your focus is, is where your, uh, is where your, you know, is, is becomes, you know, how can I say it? When you look away from the Lord you're gonna, and you're looking towards sin, um, that's a problem. There's a verse, I think it's Song of Solomon, my, eye, my, the, my beloved's eyes are like doves. And I think they say something about a dove's eyes is it can only focus on one thing at a time. And so where is your focus? You know, how do, how, do we, how do we battle sin in our lives, I guess, is what I'm getting to. How yeah, do I mean, men win I, that? Yeah, it, it, and we can, it, as we take a, a tour through the journey we've even got so far, number one, self-awareness precedes creed. Self-awareness precedes, like, hey, what do I really believe? Well, who are you in the first place? Step one. And then we moved into detachment, which is, what is detached? What am I attaching to? Your creed, the end the purpose Mm -hmm. what you're detaching from is all else Mm. so all of a sudden you're starting to dial in that laser Mm. on your on your weapon or on on your archery and by the way if you're not pulling back and aiming satan is he's grabbing one hand he's grabbing the other there's that like modern there's that uh piece of uh historical artwork catholic artwork like satan's hands are inside Mm. this person's robe from behind and you can see satan's head how often do we let that happen? Because it's mm. always these sweet words, always mm. these sensual pleasures, sex, money, power, comfort, sugar, sweetness, mm. near term. It's on, but isn't it weird how Satan and near term comfort and pleasure mm. are always just, mm. they're just best immediate, buddies. Immediate, immediate. Um, Very rarely Satan's like, all right, let's set this all up because way down the road, we want to build toward this six month, two year plan for this just massive evil we're going to go it, Satan can't operate that way. <laughs> he, can't, he can't operate in the future like that, like like the Lord can. Where the Lord actually says, hey, game over, I won. By the way, here's the whole book. Here's how it all goes. Mm. Make a decision. And I think when it comes to sin, oftentimes you said, hey, look right. What do you have? You have, your, you have, you have spouses, kids, boss. Well, they need to be in soccer. They need to be in this. They need to be in football. They, all of a sudden, these disparate decisions start pulling you away and start spreading you out, which is what gets you to the point where it's like, yeah, I'd, I'd love to make that call, Baron BJ. I would love to just, like, I would love to make the time to do blank, to do the liturgy of the hours, which, I, which I've, what I've done religiously for the last 20 years, to get to morning mass, even a few times. I'd, lo- I'd love. That's where you have to have that recalibration and you have to remind a man, oh, hey, recalibration, I know it's hard yeah. to hear, you have all the time you need to do all the things you're supposed to do. You do. And let's try to back into how that's the truth and how what we're attached to is different. We're we're, we're talking with BJ McKay, leadership consultant. And what are we going to say again? What are we calling you? Fitness fitness entrepreneur entrepreneur. is probably the closest. Fitness entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Anyway, we're we're talking with BJ McKay. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, 
you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the mama bears or the man cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our adventure guide today is BJ McKay. We want to invite everybody to go to our uh, YouTube channel and subscribe. And when you go there, you get uh, like two and a half years of me teaching the catechism line by line by line, usually down at a beach someplace, sometimes all over the world. But we go line by line through that. And you've got all of our radio shows, the video version of that. So, And, and some of the things we're doing now called Adventures in Paradise that Cindy and I are starting to do. So go to uh, the YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure, and please be, please subscribe. We'd appreciate it. We're talking with BJ McKay, our guest, who's a leadership consultant and a fitness entrepreneur. And we've been going through this thing about self-awareness and then about detachment. You know, there's a, there's a thing in, you know, when we, when we go to confession, part of our prayer when we end it is that I'll avoid the near occasion of sin. And as a, you know, I was at my dad's house, by the way, over in Lahaina. Uh, as you know, there was a big big fire there recently. My dad was actually a deacon at the Catholic Church there, Maria Lenik Lenikila Church, the one that survived the fire. Wow. They're, wow. Having, they're having mass today. It's the only building that survived the fire was the Catholic Church. But um, we were surfing out there in front of my dad's house about two miles from Lahaina. And uh, my son Jeremiah and I are out there. And there had been some rain, so the water was kind of murky. And my son and I looked at each other and I go, Jeremiah, there's, this is, murky water is considered sharky water. If you want to find some sharks, go to Florida where the water's kind of murky, I tell you. But, it's, you know, where there's murky water, it can be sharky water in Hawaii because they can't, they don't know, you can't see them coming. Where here, normally, you can see them below the surface and things like that. So we moved about an uh, eighth of a mile away and surfed in a clearer, on a clearer reef. Later that day, someone got hit by a shark where, right where Jeremiah and I were, you know. And so they were hanging out. They were not avoiding the near occasion of sharks, you know, and the, the man in the gray suit, you know, Satan. And so... Um, so, uh, part of detachment is just, you know, as a, as a, as a, as being trained in self-defense, that number one rule, what's the number one rule of self-defense? Don't be there in the first place to be attacked. Can you talk about that a little bit in the area of Yeah, um, first, detachment? my self-defense training is I was a college track and field athlete. Yeah, so. that's the best one. See you later. That's <laughs> the best one. That's the, yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you talk about like the near occasion of sin and, and entering the murky waters, which is like that's where that's where Satan has to hang out. Like very rarely is sin a massive stroke away from a good life. Like that's the that's it's always just a little sidestep and a little sidestep and a little sidestep that gets you into trouble. Hey, anything wrong with surfing? Nothing wrong with surfing today. Anything wrong with it? No, nothing wrong with this day. Anything wrong with being on water? Nothing wrong with being on water. But it's murky. And here's the circumstances. Yeah, I know what to do. Like, it's that next level of arrogance, of ego, of I am God, of I am in control that starts to get you into trouble. Why do men cheat on their wives when they travel for work? 
why do they like these are otherwise there's no different than you and me what happens i start getting overconfident physically spiritually like how much i can discipline myself the willpower myth i just gotta try harder to be just want to work hard i'm like hey can we stop it you're already in alpha you've accomplished all this with your career like well can we just stop with the try harder stuff why that's not a solution it's a different solution but when it comes to sin where people fall into sin is they start running into the word can't this is just me i just can't i just can't i can't bear i'd love to be like you that'd be great but i just can't but i just can't so it's a lack of self-awareness it's a lack of detaching it's attaching to a lower level animal version of yourself versus the higher version of yourself that that jesus calls us to like hey this is the like he still wants you to take a yoke bear it's not like it's a yokeless like when you're no pick up mine but what is it? it's light and it's easy and it and I'm fits with you. And, and it fits and i think that's where it's um like i i, I defer to i do a lot of study in reading in the desert fathers where mm. you talk about like detachment you talk about like leaving the murky waters and like how do you stay away from that and they can get criticized oh they kind of ran away they didn't know what they do you haven't read much about the desert fathers. No. <laughs> in that case they ran into battle were, they ran directly whoa, into a battle in the in the desert it's intense it's intense to a degree where i have to reread something four or five times mm-hmm. and i'm barely getting it, mm-hmm. what's going on but i think sometimes we we men in particular don't leave egypt enough we don't get away enough, even within a given day. What's the liturgy of the hours, Bear? When right. you're doing the, like, Benedictine prayer, doing this stuff, I'm leaving. But what we forget is all those retreats must lead to a confront. Mm-hmm. And when you're aware that it is a confront, I am leaving the chapel. I am leaving the monastery. I am leaving here. But if you're a modern, I have six kids. I have a wife. I have a job. I run companies. You have this, a similar situation. We're going back, Bear. Like, we can jump out of the water and look at it, but then we're going right back in with everybody else, and we're just as susceptible to all the temptations of the flesh that are in that water. All the counter-cultural um, things that you want to attach to, the, um, the the pleasures of the world, are right there to lure you. And the minute you think, much like marketing and advertising, oh, that won't <laughs> work on me. Oh, boy, you're the biggest fool in the room. You're the dumb. You're the dumb. <laughs> And I always joke in the movie, you talk about Westerns. I always love the line from a person, and you can say a lot of it. Well, I may just be uh, an old rancher from Texas, but like but that little like, I love I'm those like, guys. I, I knew those I guys in the Texas. I just the smartest guy in the room. They're yeah. right there, and I'm yeah. going to back away. I'm like, all right. I used to, I remember I used to audit, audit banks in, in uh, West Texas and being in the boardroom there and, and, and at night after five o'clock, and they got the whiskey and the bourbon out there, and we're working late, and the president comes in and goes, well, I'm just an old boy from Texas, you know, and you go, this is this guy is the smartest guy. Though. <laughs> there's no there's there's no doubt about it. But, you know, the thing about this whole thing is we need to come back to this focus is that um, the key isn't that we're going to people say you need to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Well, that never works. You you, it, you 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 can't do this without the grace of Jesus Christ, the grace of the Holy Spirit, the grit and grace. It takes determination, and they're just saying, "Lord, you know I can't do this without you." The other day, I was, I was, I was, um, I like to go out to the ocean and, and beyond the waves, certain certain beautiful place. It's it's a spot in the ocean where a spring bubbles up here in Waikiki. Waikiki means spouting waters. No one really knows about the spring anymore, but when you go there, there's a certain refreshment to the water, and it's deep, so that the big waves come, but you can just get out beyond the surf. And I tread water. And I, and I, uh, for an hour, and I, it's called power treading. You're really power, moving your arms powerfully. But I just didn't like praying the rosary. I just didn't feel like praying the rosary. Uh, normally I would pray the rosary. And so I just said, Mary, will you, will you pray for me that I'll have the grace to pray the rosary? And it was almost like, you know, uh, I looked up and I saw five palm trees on the beach. And I thought, okay, those are, that's my rosary. I'll pray those five twice, and that'll be one decade. Mm-hmm. It was just a little, it was just enough to get me started. So in your, in your pursuit of virtue and you're resist, resisting the devil, as the Bible says, and he will flee, don't do it on your own. You're not going to be able to do it. You know, when you're bench pressing, it's really interesting how when you're bench pressing and, and you're, you, you, all, you're, you, you know, you're doing, you're, your form is right, everything you're doing is right, and that... It, you know, maybe it's your seventh or eighth rep and it's just not going to move. And that buddy of yours comes over and just uses his finger just a little bit and the bar starts coming up. Um, that's the Holy Spirit in your life. 
you give that effort and he will and he will he will be your uh your spotter for you and he will to to try to do it on your own is a heresy called pelagianism you can't work your way to heaven and you can't you by your own efforts you can't rid yourself of sin but by by cooperating with god's grace grit and grace is what gets you to that life of purity and when you have that relationship with Jesus, you don't want to do stupid things that messes that up. When you have that beautiful relationship with your wife, you don't want to do stupid things that mess that up. BJ, you got the last two minutes. By the way, where can people find you? I kept forgetting to say that. Yeah, uh, a couple different places. If it's on the uh, fitness front, we're launching a new website soon. Um, it's Arsenal Fitness. Wow. Arsenalfitness.com. That's going to be coming up soon. More podcasts, Spotify there, but that's going to be a uh, fitness angle. And then um, Advisa. A B B as in Victor USA advisor USA uh, dot com and if you go forward slash leadership talks forward slash leadership talks that's a link to my blog with my content when it comes on um, leadership it'll really uh, help well. you guys develop clarity if you want to set new goals in your life new direction in your life or in your business um, that type of process that BJ leads you through just brings real clarity and, so, and another good one is uh, simple to remember on a Twitter or X now. It's at BJ McKay. Yeah. So you could tell yeah. I was an early adopter over there. So that's an easy one where I'll pump things out and you can follow links back to whatever I'm putting out there. And when, and when, uh, is, your book, when is your book coming out? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that question. <laughs> I I'm, keep uh, pressing I'm on, you. I'm on page 60 of 366 right now. So I moved I, I moved ahead about 36 pages since the last well, time. Well, i got to put you in touch with my publisher, Sophia. Yeah, I know a, you, it's, are, it's, you probably a, already have a publisher, but... It's fruitful for it's fruitful um, meditation for me to create that. And know that there's going to be somebody outside of myself um, measuring those reflections from the Desert Fathers and trying to uh, foster that level of um, in, in being united with Jesus. I love that. Go back into a world that knows him so little anymore. But you you said something earlier. I want to touch on. So we had the okay, last. You, got, two you wrap it up. You got a minute now. You you talked about um, like looking and asking, "Hey, Mary, will you help me?" And how uh, Pelagianism is. I'm going to do it myself. That right there, if you talk about self-awareness, Christian detachment, and suffering all at once is a great place to end because the men that I coach most often, the asking for help, the power and grit and manliness and the humility and meekness to ask for help. Mm. The world calls those things by a different name, and you will not get praised. You might get looked down on. You might look weak, soft. Get in that moment and make that decision to ask for help and see how soft that is. Let's see how easy that was. That takes how grit. Light that that was. takes it, grit to do that. It's miserable. Humility is miserable, particularly for the ambitious, alpha, aggressive, like achievers. That is your gauntlet. That is your bench press. That is your everything. And when you get caught in that moment, will you be tough spiritually? Will you have the courage to ask for help? And I love that you brought that up for us to close. God, we got to get you back on the show again already. Um, BJ McKay, where can pe people find you one more one more time? Just one yeah, one, on, one place. Uh, Twitter X at BJ McKay on okay. Twitter and X, and then um, the two best places: ArsenalFitness.com and AdvisaUSA.com forward slash Leadership Talks. Now we're gonna we're, you and I are gonna talk more uh, off the show uh, in the next month or so. But BJ McKay, welcome. We want you to have one. We want you to be one of the contributors. We need a chapter from you for the Man Cave too. We'll talk story about that until next week. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell. 